I, I was troubled yesterday by a, a front page um, story in the Scranton Sunday Times uh, concerning uh, uh, our nursing situation. And I was troubled because, uh, and Kevin Case, Kevin Case used the word misconstrued. Uh, I think the prefix miss applies a lot to the way the board and the district gets covered uh, in our local print media. And I, and I for one, took uh, some umbrage yesterday uh, uh, in a, an article that, that took four columns uh, on the front page and six columns above the fold on page A10. Uh, we had one sentence mention uh, the LPN core uh, of our certified professional nursing staff. Now we in total employ 11 CSNs and 12 LPNs. All of those people are licensed nursing professionals. The LPN staff engages in every single aspect of our medical and health care provision in our elementary, middle, and secondary schools. They were not used in calculating a ratio of students to healthcare professionals, which was absolutely inappropriate and unacceptable as far as I am concerned, because it misleads our general public. I made this statement once before in this room about something that was done without real consideration. We now have parents wondering, are our children safe? Are our children properly cared for in their schools when it comes to their healthcare profession? And it shouldn't have happened. It really shouldn't have happened. Our ratio, whereas I believe, and I mean I haven't done a thorough study on this, I've done a brief study on it, we're one of the few, if not the only school district locally, who uses LPNs as well as CSNs in our medical staff. They are professionals, they are licensed, and they are capable. It's where the rubber meets the road when it comes to treating our children. And that they weren't used in defining what we do, to me, is, is horrible. It's, uh, it painted a totally uh, 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 unacceptable picture of what our reality is. It's not reality. And, and, and I, and I want to ask, what has there been service denied? Has a child been denied medical help? when they needed it. And if so, why hasn't that come to us? We see litigation here all the time. 99% of our litigation comes to us out of the special ed world. And we prepare for that and we deal with that. I'm on the board 19 months. I have yet to see a court case brought to us or a suit brought to us on medical services being denied children. I, I haven't seen anything like that. I haven't seen where we were delinquent in providing medical services to children. Now look, we, we had an article last week, we have a 10.9 million possible budget deficit. If we had an infinite amount of money, I mean, we could have a, a clinic in every building. We don't. If you talk to our kindergarten teachers, they have 27 in all of their classes. Superintendent Mike Mayen at Abington Heights was complaining last spring that their numbers in their kindergarten classes at Abington Heights were approaching 20 and how disturbing it was to him. It's all about money. Now, could we have more? But I, I really believe that we are doing an excellent job as a district with our health, our health provisions and our, our nursing staff. I mean, we, we have a ratio nobody can contend with. And, and I, for one, want to know why that kind of thing happens. I'm hoping that at least the people watching our broadcast can, can cue to this because they certainly didn't get it out of the print media yesterday. And I'm not going to tell somebody how to do their job when they're writing columns, but a single source for me in the CSN staff employed by the Scranton School District to me is not adequate. It just isn't being done the way it should get done. I mean, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I didn't like it. I think it was done pro improperly and it was done to misguide. I'd like to ask the superintendent if we could consider an information correspondence to our families. It's something as soon as possible. Elementary, middle, and high school. Letting them know what their hard numbers are. And when I talk about LPNs, I'm not talking about LPNs required in an IEP 
for a special education student. That's a number in addition to what we employ for our general student use. And we do have those. I'm not going to put Mrs. Colorossi on the spot for a number tonight, but I know because we've approved their contracts. If that could get done, Mr. Marichek, I think we would all be served well. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. And you so I'd like to just add that um, I'm probably the most senior beside Mr. Martinelli that's been on board a long, longer than me. Um, in the five years I've been here, I've never seen a case come forward uh, on our nursing, uh, except praising our nursing staff, you know, that, uh, that we've had uh, a good staff and, and uh, I've never seen anything come forward like that. Nor have I. Side, do you have a number that when you add in the LPNs, what our ratio is at that point? It's about 450 to 1. So. And, and it, it, the, the best numbers above that are in the 800s. Okay. So like the student to, race, student to, to pr nursing professional ratio in this grant school district is about four, approximately 455 to 1. And the next best ratio is in the mid 800s. So, I mean, I, I want to know how we're out of, out of line here. I want to know how we're unsafe here. And I, I should, one more point. We had a nurse who does not have a certificate or a graduate level degree in healthcare administration to comment on how the district is improperly staffed. She may be a very capable nurse. She may be a very capable person at recognizing injury or illness and how to treat. But she is not capable and she is not trained in staffing. That is not what she is done, has done and is asked to do. So I'm not, I'm not accepting her as a credible source. What, what her circumstance is, is her circumstance. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.